out here. Shh. Seriously, why are you hanging out in the woods? Shh. No, I'm for real. Why did I find you in the woods? And why do you keep whispering? I'm trying to get quiet. But why? It's important for us to get quiet sometimes. But not right now. We've got to sing some KE worship songs <gasps> and really loud. Okay, let's do it. Your love was never far You made a way to get to me You were the whisper Leading me to your heart Forever I belong to you Now I can see clearly My God, you for me You won't let go Your love won't let me down And I know it's you Yeah, I know that you're
chasing as I pray You leave the 99 for me You paint the sky with promises of your grace So I will find my way to you Getting quiet. Does this mean we won't get to talk to our KE friends? Hello? Hello? Oh man, is Cindy just national in the talk again? <laughs> Lindsay! I'm totally kidding. I won't leave you hanging, but I will tell you about the importance of getting quiet. When you say quiet, is it like having a moment of silence? Not necessarily, but close. Wait, I know. You want us to start off with a prayer. <gasps> That's why you asked me to get quiet. Bingo, you are right. Hold on, before we keep diving into getting quiet, why are we in the middle of nowhere? Well, this is my favorite place to get quiet, in the middle of nowhere, with a lot of quiet moments, with the birds chirping, with the fresh air in our faces, we can get quiet. Okay, I think I know what we're up to do, what we're gonna do today. <gasps> Amazing, let's get quiet and jump into our first Bible story. God's story, prayer. So part of God's story is about prayer, and it goes like this. Prayer is what we call a conversation we have with God. That means even though God created the entire universe and has power over all things, he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to know him. That's pretty amazing. We can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. But let's look at four examples of different ways we can pray. One way to pray is to praise God. That's when we tell God what we love about him. Like a guy named Jehoshaphat. He was king of God's family when some big time armies declared war on them. Jehoshaphat was terrified. So he talked to God about it. He said, God, you are the mighty ruler of all things. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. King Jehoshaphat believed God could help them. So as he went into battle, he sent people ahead of his army to praise God. They said, give thanks to the Lord. 
His faithful love endures forever. Yep, that means he thanked God before he won the war. And when God heard his praise, he caused those big armies to attack each other. Jehoshaphat didn't even have to fight. A second way to pray is to repent. See, we all mess up, which means we turn away from God. When we repent, we ask him to forgive us and we turn back to him. One time, another king named David made a big mistake. He took something that wasn't his. Then David tried to cover it up, which turned it into an even bigger mess. When David's good friend Nathan told him he disobeyed God, David repented. He said, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Mercy is when someone gets forgiveness they don't deserve. And guess what? God will always forgive us when we repent. Of course, anyone can pray to God, not just kings. One woman named Hannah reminds us of a third way we can pray. We can ask God for something. Now, Hannah really wanted to have a baby, and she told God that. But you know what was crazy about her prayer? Even though she really wanted a baby, she said, God, if you give me a son, then I will give him back to you. Kids, isn't that unusual? To ask for something you want, then give it back? Well, a year later, Hannah had a son, and she did exactly what she promised. She gave her son back to God by sending him to live with a priest named Eli and do God's work. And Samuel just so happens to be a great example of a fourth way we can pray. Like any good conversation, we shouldn't do all the talking. We should listen, too. That's because God is in control, and we've got to yield or give in to what he wants. We yield when we listen to what God says and obey him, no matter what we want. One night, God called Samuel's name three times. When Samuel finally realized God wanted to talk to him, he said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel stopped to listen, and God told him things. When Samuel obeyed what God told him, God kept talking to him. And when we pray, when we praise, when we repent, when we ask, and when we yield, we remember that he's the one in charge and that we get to talk to him because we're loved by him. And that's some of what the Bible says about prayer. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is also listening to God. There are a lot of ways to pray. Jehoshaphat praised God. David repented. Hannah asked God for what she really, really wanted. Samuel listened. And they all wanted what God wanted more than what they wanted. Prayer reminds us that God is in control. He loves us and wants to be close to us. And that's a part of God's story. The power of prayer is so important. God just wants us to get to know him better. My favorite part is how we can talk to him at any time of the day. He's always there to listen. Yep, and it seems so simple too. God just wants us to have a conversation with him every day, like we do with our close friends. Now, do you see what I mean about getting quiet? Yes, but again, why are we in the middle of nowhere? Well, this is one of the best places to pray. When I look at everything he has created and the beauty that is around us when we're outdoors, I can be reminded of how awesome God is. And it just makes me want to talk to him even more. Something I love to do when I'm outdoors is trying to spot different animals. Oh, oh yes! My favorite is when you're overlooking the ocean and you try to spot a dolphin or spotting all kinds of different prey. Oh, I love that too. Oh, this is making me want to play a spot the difference game, animal edition. You want to play? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it.
a specific way to pray? Do we have to get down on our knees? Should we pray out loud? Should we say a certain prayer? No way! We can simply just talk to God like we're talking to our best friend. So I don't have to do anything specific? Nope! God just wants to hear our voice, our prayer requests, our thankful hearts. It doesn't matter what you're doing or where you are. It doesn't even matter how long it is or how short it is. Wait, it doesn't matter where it is? I can pray anywhere? Pretty much. Oh, this is a game changer! God, you're going to be hearing from me a lot more. I'm going to just talk to you all day long. That is so awesome, Lindsay. Let's learn more about getting quiet. Have you ever noticed that when you get quiet, you actually hear better? Our lives are filled with so much noise. Just think about how loud it is on the bus when your friends are all trying to talk at once. Despite the noises all around us, we need to set aside time each day to get quiet with God and grow our friendship with Him. Jesus set a great example for what it looks like to find a quiet place and spend time with God. Jesus' life was just as busy, if not more busy, than ours. He did a lot of normal stuff with his friends, but he also spent time traveling to different places and helping the people he met. He would teach them about God's love, and they would ask him a lot of questions. Jesus was always willing to do anything he could for others, but he also knew he needed to set aside time to rest. Even though he was God's son, Jesus made sure he got quiet and spent time with his heavenly Father. One of the times Jesus liked to get quiet was in the morning. In the book of Mark, Jesus had spent the evening healing and helping people. This could have made Jesus very tired, but instead of sleeping in, he got up before the sun to find a quiet place, and to no surprise, his heavenly Father was ready and waiting to spend time with him. Jesus knew that despite all the important things he was doing, nothing was more important than his friendship with God. Even when Jesus was busy helping crowds of people, he would get away by himself to talk to God and listen to what God had to say. Whenever Jesus would spend time with God, it helped him have the power and the strength to keep healing sick people and helping others he met. Jesus also liked to spend time with God outdoors. In the book of Matthew, we see that Jesus was with his friends in the Garden of Gethsemane. He told them to stay where they were so he could get alone to pray. You see, Jesus knew the time was coming for him to take the punishment for the sins of the world. He could have chosen to talk to his friends about what he was feeling, but instead, Jesus knew his heavenly Father was the best person to talk to. Jesus realized if he set aside time to get quiet with God, he could hear what his Father had to say. When we take time to listen to God, we can hear Him too. It doesn't really matter where you go. Just make it a habit to get quiet every day, and soon your friendship with God will grow. I'm going to make sure I set aside time for God and get quiet. I loved how Jesus spent his mornings to find a quiet place and spent time with God. That is so true, Lindsay. We're always here to help others. Sometimes we may fill our days and our schedules, but it's so important to make time for God. All we need to do is open our hearts to God and get quiet. Hey, what if we take time to get quiet now? <gasps> Let's do it! But before we do, let's go over our takeaway for the day. KE friends, stand up with us and follow along. Get, get, quiet, quiet. That was so amazing, KE friends. Lindsay, don't you think they did amazing? Incredible. Loved it. This time, let's do it all together, but with more energy. Are you ready? I'm ready. Get, get quiet. quiet. So amazing, KE friends. Let's dive back into our Bible verse. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. James 4, 8. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. James 4, 8. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. James 4, 8. I'm closer to you, but I feel like I'm so far away. Cause I let my fear, let my fear get in front of my face.
deeper, keep believing that you are. I wanna walk on water. amazing. I loved getting to enjoy the outdoors with you. Let's reflect on what we got to learn. Our first question for today is, where is a quiet, comfortable place you can spend time with God? Our second question is, how does getting quiet grow our friendship with God? And our final question is, where and when do you plan to spend time with God this week? My favorite part about getting to have God as our forever friend is getting to talk to him every day. Right, let's talk to him now. Let's do it. Thank you, God, for being here with us today. Thank you for always being our forever friend and knowing that we can count on you is so amazing. And with every situation we have or any concern, we can always come to you like you're our best friend. We love you so much. Amen. Amen. Today has been incredible. I love this wilderness. Oh, it's the wonderful. smell, the birds, just everything. <sighs> Are you finally ready to get some quiet time? I guess that you have taught me today why being quiet can be important. Let's try being quiet together in the woods. Okay, but I was thinking. <gasps> no, 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 don't think. I, I try being quiet together. Let's try again. <laughs> Sounds good. How am I doing so far? I could get used to this quiet thing. You, you're failing miserably. This is going to take a lot of practice for you to fully get this concept. You don't think I'm quiet? No, 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 whisper, whoosh, whisper. KE friends, I think this is gonna take a lot longer for her to know what we have to do. As far as right now, I hope you all have an awesome week and get some quiet time. Yeah, I hope you get some quiet time. What am I going to do with you? Bye, KE friends. <laughs>